Go. There we go, guys. What's up? Welcome back to Fish the Moment. Fishing here on Beaver Lake again today. And it's kind of been an interesting morning, but I finally made my way back into a creek and got my, well, my first decent largemouth in the boat. So let me explain what I've been doing up until this point, and then we'll get back to what I'm catching them on right here. So let me explain how I got to the area where I just caught this fish. The day started out with a lot of cloud cover and fog, and these low light conditions were very similar to the conditions I faced last week when I was catching a lot of really good spotted bass and smallmouth on the main lake here at Beaver. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out using the link in the description. And because the conditions were similar to the week before, I thought that I might be able to catch more fish throwing that Spro rock crawler on some rocky main lake points and main lake banks. Unfortunately though, I only got one bite trying to repeat what I'd done the week before and that fish actually came off. And the main difference between last week and this week is that there was no wind this morning. And if you saw my last video on Beaver Lake, you'll know that the wind was the key factor that was positioning the fish on these main lake banks. And without the wind, these fish didn't seem to actually pull up on these banks and the few that were there were just slapping at my crankbait. And so I ran five or six areas where I caught them the week before with a crankbait and a variety of other baits like a Ned Rig, a drop shot, a small swim bait, and a swing head, but nothing was producing fish. And after trying on the main lake for two hours, I realized this bite was not going to happen. And about two hours into the day, the cloud cover and the fog actually cleared out and we had bright bluebird skies with no wind. And in my opinion, these are the toughest conditions you can face when fishing a deep, clear reservoir. And those bright bluebird skies and no wind are gonna make those bass really inactive when you have five to eight feet of water visibility. And so usually my strategy is to try to find some dirtier water, especially in the springtime because that dirty water will warm up faster when exposed to all that sunlight. And that will get these fish moving shallow around shallow laydowns, docks, and other shallow cover and make them a lot easier to catch than the fish that are out on the main lake. And so to find some dirtier water, I decided to run to the very back end of one of the major creeks on the upper end of Beaver Lake. And the reason I ran to the back of this creek is because we've had a lot of rain recently. And that rain will cause runoff in the back of these creeks, which will stain up the water. And you may find in the back of these creeks, water visibility might be two to three feet, where on the main lake, it might be five to eight feet. And as a result, that water might be a lot warmer in the back of those creeks, maybe 56 to 58 degree water temperatures, as opposed to maybe 50 to 52 degree water temperatures on the main lake, just because that water clarity is different. And when I got into the back of this creek, I noticed that the water visibility was a lot dirtier. You had two and a half to three feet of visibility compared to seven feet of visibility, and the water temperature was four degrees warmer. And so I was excited to see if some big largemouth had pulled up to the bank and were staging on some steep rocky banks and laydowns. And I threw a rock crawler as well as an Alabama rig down these banks, but didn't have any success. And I didn't really get a bite until I made my way all the way into the back of this creek, about as far as you can go, and got on the last channel swing bank in the very back of these creeks. And this is a place where I find a lot of good fish this time of year. And I just caught that one fish, and we'll, let's see if we get another one. Yep. Another male bass right here. Not exactly sure how to get these females in the boat, but I'm definitely getting some good males on the jig. These just aren't keepers, but the females have to be close by. I don't know if they're a little bit further towards the mouth of the creek. Maybe the males are here, or if the females are just out here in the middle. I threw that Alabama rig around a little bit to try to get some of those females that may be staged up out in front of these bluff walls. Didn't get any bites, so maybe it's just a matter of weeding through some fish as well. I'm not 100% sure, but that's a pretty good sign. Two bites here, not really quick. Both of them on, again, that little finesse jig. This is actually just a handmade jig that I make, and it has a striking menace grub on the back. It's just a 3 8 ounce finesse jig. I'll talk about it a little bit more um, at, later on in the video, but for now, I wanna get back to fishing, try to put some of these fish in the boat. So after catching my second male bass out of this creek, I knew that there was a group of fish in here and it seemed like they were getting ready to spawn because both of those male bass were up in two to three feet of water and they were on an area where I would expect bass to actually start making beds. But I wasn't able to get any female bass to bite in here. Even when I started to back off, throw an Alabama rig, a jerkbait, a crankbait, a little bit deeper and more towards the mouth of this creek. 
And this is something that happens to me every spring. I'll find a bank that's loaded with male bass, but I'm not able to catch any female bass. And I know they're close by because they're going to be spawning on these same areas where the males are making the beds. But despite trying every bait in the tackle box, moving deeper, moving further out in the creeks, whatever it is, I can't locate those females. And I've spent six or seven hours sometimes in a small creek trying to figure out how to get those females to bite and have no success. And so what I've found over the years that's most successful for me is actually change the area that I'm in rather than trying to force those females to bite if I don't catch any within let's say 30 minutes. And what I'll do is just go to a new creek and see if those females are in a different stage of the pre-spawn to spawn transition. And a lot of times just by changing the creek you're in, the size of your fish will go up. There we go, it's a better one. There's a keeper at least, that fish is a little bit deeper off that bank. There we go, that's what we're looking for. That's the size we want. That looks like that may be, it still might be a male, but it may be a female. And it was way off the bank here. I'm thinking that's what was gonna happen. These females might just be a little bit further off the bank, maybe, you know, in that five to 10 foot range, as opposed to being right up against the bank, which is where I was getting a lot of those male bass. And I think these females will push up a little bit shallower as the day progresses, as the water warms up. But that's the size bass we're looking for. If we can get five of those, that'd be a really good day. Let me weigh him real quick. Just a one pound, 12 ounce, it's not a big one, obviously, but it is a keeper here and it's kind of what I'm looking for on beaver. If I can get five of these in the boat and then get one three pounder, you're in that 10 to 11 pound range. Again, that's really good on beaver in tournaments. And so that's not too bad right here. Let me get this guy back in the lake and then I'm gonna spin back around. I'm gonna keep fishing down this bank. Try to stay a little bit deeper on these banks to see if that produces any bigger fish. And there are a lot of nice looking banks through this area. This is just a little channel swing bank behind me here. And it's the last, or one of the last deep water banks leading in the back of the creek, just like that last bank I found him on. And so this seems like a pretty consistent deal where I can run to the back of these creeks, fish these kind of channel swing banks in the very, very backs of the creeks with a jig and get bit. And you may be wondering what I mean by the last channel swing bank in the back of the creek. And this is basically just the last steep bank in the back of this creek before that creek flattens out. And so we can actually see this if we take a look at the creek I'm fishing right now on Google Earth when the lake is drawn down. And if we look really closely, you can actually see the old creek channel that creates this creek. And this old river channel, riverbed, creek channel, whatever you wanna call it, will wind through this creek from the very back all the way out towards the mouth of this creek where it dumps out in the main lake. And the last channel swing bank in this creek is the last time that that creek channel will swing up against a bank before it goes into the very dead end of this creek and that creek flattens out. And so a lot of times these banks are going to have a little bit steeper slope to them. They may have some chunk rock down them or just have a little bit deeper water there, maybe six or seven feet next to the bank compared to two or three feet on the opposite side of the creek. And this is the place where a lot of bass will spawn and stage right before they start spawning. And it's also usually the area of these lakes that warms up the fastest. And so you'll find the fish spawning on these banks two to three weeks before they will on the main lake. Oh gosh, <laughs> that fish followed it out from the bank over there and I watched him swim after it and he crushed it. Oh my gosh, that was an awesome bite. Wish you could have caught that on camera. He was swimming after it, I stopped it and he crushed it. There's some active fish back in this creek. This is a really nice spot. Give me a second here, guys. There we go, that's a nice keeper spotted bass right there. On that jig, I was actually just swimming it back after pitching up to one of these shallow spots and there are definitely some fish back in these creeks. Not big ones, but they're definitely down there and that's a really good fish. So number two for the day and that's a fat one. 
just a pound and a half spotted bass, nothing huge, but so another pound and a half for right here. And so not a bad way to get the day going. And it seems like if I just keep fishing this jig, I'm getting bit every 10, 15 minutes in the back of these creeks, even more often than that. And so there's some good fish back in here, not as good as on the main lake, but these are all the male bass again, they're pulling up. And again, just throwing that brown jig with that menace scrub. Let's get this guy back in the water. There we go. That fish was up there shallow. I need to be making sure I make some good presentations up there real shallow. There's a lot of little bushes and trees and all kinds of stuff. And this water is actually a little bit more stained back up in here. There's a little bit of current flowing. And so I actually might be able to even catch some fish just pitching some random bushes and laydowns. And maybe there's some fish that have actually pulled up. And there's these really nice banks. Man, this area is good back in here. Got him. Good one. That fish was so shallow right there. Wow, that's a good one too. He choked that jig. That fish was in a foot of water. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's a female right there. That fish, I'm telling you, was in no less or no more than two feet of water. That's the size fish I came back into these creeks for. And I think I may have just been fishing even a little bit too deep, maybe. And so there's a lot of scattered bushes and all kinds of stuff I need to be pitching at that I probably just skipped over. That's a nice fish. Let's get a weight on this guy right there. Three pounds, 15 ounces. That's a fat one, almost a four pounder right there. That's a good one. On that little finesse jig, went through some males to finally get a female and actually got the male or the female shallower than I was catching the males. That is a good fish right there. All on that brown jig. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get this guy back in the lake. Okay guys, so here's a jig I'm throwing today. I haven't talked about it yet, so let me explain what it is. Basically, it's just a 3 8 ounce finesse jig, and this head is actually poured by my local tackle shop. And so I don't even know where they got the mold or anything like that. They're just like a dollar a piece at my local tackle shop. So I buy them there, and again, just a 3 8 ounce head with I think like a 3 yacht kind of light wire jig hook. And then I actually put my own skirt on this jig head because it comes with no skirt. And the skirt I tie on this is actually a mixture of flat rubber and then some living rubber and the flat rubber is actually a brown rubber and then I use a green living rubber to mix it in and then I trim the collar so that you have that finesse jig collar like that so basically all you'll have is one layer on the bottom and I just put a striking menace grub on the back and green pumpkin and that's one of my favorite jigs it skips really well great around boat docks great just fishing around rocks or anything and it's kind of my go-to jig i throw this in black and blue and in green pumpkin when i just want to just pitch a jig around and try to get some bites and so that's an awesome little jig right there and you can definitely find heads like this online on ebay and stuff like that and i'll link all the skirt material i use in the description below so you guys can make your own jigs too Okay, so that last fish bit me really shallow up in one of those shallow bushes. And so I'm wondering if all these bushes are potential targets. I don't really know exactly what's going on under the water here. I think there's a little bit deeper water right close to that last stretch of bushes I was fishing. But they could be on all this stuff. I have no idea. And so now that I'm back in here, I've had several bites. I'm just going to slow down and really try to pick apart all of these different bushes and laydowns and trees in front of me and just see if there's a lot of fish that are pulling up and using these or if it's just kind of a few fish on key little stretches. It's kind of hard to tell right now. Got him. Well, there's a fish on that one right there. That was real shallow. Wow. They're all over this stuff right now. It's another decent male bass right there. Just weeding through them and on that brown jig. So I'm talking about not a keeper, but good fish. So I caught several more fish in the back of this creek and caught 11 fish in total in a 75 yard stretch in the back of this creek. And after I was done fishing through the creek, I realized that all my bites came in that small 75 yard section in the very back end of the creek, basically until I couldn't take my boat any shallower. And I did fish my way back out of the creek, more towards the main lake and never got bit. And in both of the creeks I got bit, 
all my bites came in that last 75 yard stretch on that last channel swing bank and then a little bit up on top of those shallower flats as well. And this is very typical with this pattern and I've seen it happen on about a dozen lakes in Arkansas. And it usually happens whenever that water temperature is between 54 and 60 degrees in the back of these creeks. And it doesn't have to be in that March to April time of the year. It can also happen in January and February. The big key is that water temperature needs to be in that 55 to 60 degree range. And so if you get some warm rain or some warmer temperatures, earlier in the year, in January and February, you can still find fish in the back end of these creeks and catch a lot of good fish. And so definitely check out the back end of these creeks, that last channel swing bank, if you see those water temperatures, and don't be afraid to run back in the back of these creeks and check, even if that water temperature is 46 to 47 degrees in the main lake, because if you have that warm rain, it doesn't take much for the back of these creeks to warm up into that ideal range. And the biggest tip I can give for this pattern is to keep fishing into the back of these creeks until your trolling motor starts digging up mud and you can't go any further. I think the biggest reason that guys miss this pattern is they turn around too soon in the back of these creeks because they're not getting bit. And what you'll find is that if you start maybe a mile from the back of this creek and fish all the way towards the back, you won't get any bites until you get to that very last section, that last 75 yards. And most guys are gonna turn around, but you need to keep going until you can't go any further in those creeks. And a lot of times you'll be rewarded with some good fish. Okay guys, so I'm back at the boat ramp and I'm gonna call it a day. I had a blast catching them on this finesse jig in the back of those creeks. And as I was fishing today, I realized there's not that much dirty water in the back of these creeks on the upper end of Beaver Lake. And so the number of areas I could fish is very limited. So tomorrow I plan on actually heading south on Beaver Lake to the dirty water end. And hopefully I'll be able to find a lot more areas where these fish are pulling up like catch them on a jig and some other baits so stay tuned for that video it'll be coming out very soon and other than that hope you guys enjoyed i'll see y'all next one